I guess we don't have to do the clap. That's too bad, because I have the clap today to do it with. I mean, right. <clears throat> uh, Thanks for the warning. Worst marathon ever. Welcome, everyone, to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine's Worst Marathon Ever. With an H. Is it really with an H? It is today. Wow. Uh, I'm Rashad Field. And I'm Big Anklevich. And uh, I, this is the That Gets My Goat Worst Marathon Ever, if that matters. Yeah, have we done the Doonstief Marathon? Mm, I suppose not. Whenever we do a marathon, we just run it on the That Gets My Goat um, what do you call it? Feed. Feed, we never run it on the main. No. People that go to the main feed, they don't want to know about us. They only want the stories. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> they get that and go, oh, F this. Oh, there's another one? There was one of these yesterday. What was it the guy said? <laughs> Which guy? The guy that hates us? Oh, anyway. <laughs> I got to narrow it down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You keep, keep going. Okay, so what's our topic of conversation today? I don't know. I think uh, we were going to speak on Comic-Con a little bit, right? Or, is, okay. or are we waiting for another day for that? No, we might as well do it now. I, I just came back from Comic-Con a couple of days ago, and uh, usually we do an episode where I talk about it. Or if you go, we talk about it. And now we're instead we're going to do a marathon of episodes. I thought that that would be a good idea. It would kill two or three days, because usually I can talk for 40 minutes or whatever about the things that I saw and the things that bothered Each me in the Each thing lines. you saw... Well, in this no. case, yeah, there, there's one specifically that I figured we'd do a whole episode about. And I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it as it comes. I'm not sure how much I have to say, but you know, feel free to ask questions and, okay. and, and wherever that takes us. So we're back in the park again. When we got here, there was no children on the playground. And then the second we sat down and turned on the recorder, a whole mob of them showed up. So they're the ones you hear screaming in the background. But we're just going to pretend that they're not here, nor is any of the traffic noise, and that we're actually in my old kitchen. But you can hear us fine? I can, yeah, I can okay. hear fine. I mean, I'm hope... sitting right across from you. How could I not hear you? Uh, you've got the headphones in, is what I mean. <laughs> and there, are, there is traffic just right there uh, beside us, on two sides of us. And every time a motorcycle goes by, I worry that you know it's ear-splitting. But anyhow... Uh, and that one car with the amplifier instead of the muffler... Yeah, that was last time, and I, I, I believe he's been alerted to go by several times during our session today. Yeah, yeah. Even though we're not recording on a regular day, the uh, word still got out to him. So, hey, before I talk about Comic-Con, last time we talked, we talked about your new house a little bit. And I thought, oh, okay, well, he'll be moved in there really soon, but that's not the case anymore. Well, yeah, I suppose that's not the case. By the time these air, you still won't be living. I probably will not, yeah. I will be, uh, well, by the time these air, I suppose, we haven't totally decided, but I think I may be on vacation in Canada again. My favorite vacation to take every year. Oh. Is it really? <laughs> see, my favorite vacation is Comic-Con. I do look forward to it every summer. Uh, or, well, for the rest of the year, in fact. And it's not my favorite vacation. That was just a joke. Ah, okay. And there have been various levels of fun that I've had at Comic-Con through the years and there was one I think it, w- it would probably have been 2011 where it was the day I we complained about it or I complained about it, you weren't there it was the one where I would spend hours in line to see something and then I still wouldn't get in to see it um, and you know the crowds were just awful and, and it was expensive and uh, oh hey one less child in the there's in the playground there's shots going off too look out but uh, that year I, whether it was 2010 or 2011 i was tempted for f- a few months to say you know i'm not going next year that's it and then when the next year came along i changed my mind and the tickets had come and gone and so i had to buy them from a scalper yeah, because i, I became gonna, desperate i was just bought like, oh, it geez. off ebay or something like that didn't you oh uh, my god no it, uh, there was a guy in, in a forum that i'm part of that had extra tickets and sold them for an incredible markup but i figured i would regret it if i didn't go just because usually it's my favorite thing to do every uh-huh. summer and uh, this year i was afraid because it started out pretty crappily and it was really, really humid. There was fog, I think I told you about. There was fog going into San Diego. The, the, the air was that wet that uh, 
my shirt was just I could feel it trickling down my back as I was you know walking around and the sweat and I kept smelling something really bad <laughs> like really bad not just BO but just like a, a sour funk and I'd be like holy crap please don't let that be me I please don't let that smell be me but it's hard because you're around so many other people and some of them stink and the smell would come and go and so I assumed okay it must have been a stinky guy here and then a, a stinky guy over there and you know it wasn't you know, a stinky girl because girls smell nice and then you um, finally went into the bathroom one time and you realized that there was a dead possum stuck to your back. That's and that's was. where it was coming you, from. You beat me to the punch, but yes, that's where I was going with this. A couple of hours later, I was by myself and not around anybody else. And I was like, okay, I'm going to find out. And I smelled my shirt and it smelled just ghastly. And I was like, oh crap, it is me. And so I went into the exhibition hall and bought another shirt and changed into it because I didn't want to be that guy that people were standing next to and be like, oh my, oh, were you, you raised in a septic tank and all that. And I've been swimming in raw sewage. I love it. I was thinking hopefully anybody would be like that. If they <laughs> realized they smelled bad, they would do whatever they even spend money to, to what shirt did you get? Uh, I got a shirt that had Magneto and the, uh, for some reason, I had Magneto and the Avengers, and they don't belong together, but I liked <laughs> that it. It depends. In uh, mm -hmm. Age of Apocalypse, they belong together. Okay. Well, you just out-nerded me on that. <laughs> anyway. Doesn't I, happen often. I try, though. You know, I'm giving humankind too much credit. I know that there's a lot of people that even if they realized the stink was theirs, they'd be like, better them than me, or the opposite of that. Whatever the nasty thing to say would be. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, it started out really frustrating and muggy and sweaty and smelly and there's way too many people jammed in way too small a place and I was just like, oh no, you know, this is terrible. I'm, I'm, and I was very, getting very angry and I was at the level of anger that it usually takes me two or three days to get to at Comic-Con on the very first morning. But luckily... You wouldn't like him when he's angry too. No, Mr. McGee, don't, don't make me angry. You, you, you wouldn't like my smell when I'm angry. <laughs> But luckily, that was the worst it got, was that morning, Thursday morning, the rest of the time, things went well for me. Oh, I was there because I wanted to buy some stuff from Hasbro. And the first place I went after I got my pass was to the Hasbro line. And getting your pass was like a madhouse, just like yeah. packed. That took hours. I got there early. I, I, I got up at 6 that morning so that I would be able to not have to stand in lines and all that stuff and, and by the time I got my pass it was already open and it opened at 9 30 but yeah I immediately went to Hasbro and they said oh sorry man if you weren't in line at 6 or 6 30 this morning you don't get anything and so I was just like oh mother wait are we editing this one <laughs> and uh, we will never again edit one and that's something you've heard me complain about before there, there's three or four things that surprise me every year and they shouldn't surprise me because they happen every year and one of them is the the inability to buy things because of how disorganized things are you know where they'll be like you can buy as much as you want of something just so you can guarantee that the 40 people behind you in the line get nothing which I've never found fair and that didn't seem to be the case this year but uh, the, the other thing that I always complain about you can probably predict this if you've ever listened to our show the other thing is when we're all stuffed into this tiny little cattle car filled with just hundreds of fat people that are sweaty and, and, and they're overloaded with memorabilia and stuff and then somebody stops in front of you and you bump into them and then you get shoved and all that stuff. The, 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 the people that stop. I, I Hate is too soft a word for the people who stop. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, the inability to park is also yeah. just massively terrible i mean even if you're willing to pay the 20 dollars to park in a lot the lots are always full and so yeah i walked so many miles on this weekend to the point where i was just like wow i will have lost a ton of weight by the time i got home and no i'm exactly where i was last week at this time I, it's, it's just not fair anyway all those those cases were true but i i never really got that frustrated or that angry um, except for during one panel for the rest of the weekend. And I thought that things went 
fairly swimmingly. I, I was able to go to the Hasbro line later and I didn't have to get up at six o'clock in the morning to do it. And they had implemented a one per customer limit on a couple of the things that were really, really in demand. And I heard a bunch of people complaining about how unfair that was. But I would rather it be one per customer than all you can eat any day. Just, I mean, all you can eat is not fair. And one per customer maybe is frustrating if you want to get stuff for your friends or to resell or whatever. But if it guarantees that way more people are going to be able to get what they want, you know, I, everybody should implement a one per customer. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was just my preface. I had fun. I was in good spirits. I called you on Saturday night like I always do to, to go on and on about, you know, what a good mood I was in and that I'm actually going to accomplish something and we're going to apply it to the Steef and get Parsec Awards and groupies and fun and I don't know. And now, um, now all of that is gone, of course, because it's been a couple of days. But uh, Back to same old, same old... It was so hot and muggy and dirty and kind of miserable. It's, it's not in a great place in San Diego. It's kind of a crappy area. Not industrial exactly, but just lots of homeless. And on Saturday when I went back to my car, I saw rats. And I was talking to my cousin on the phone and I counted the rats. And I think I got to six. I've never seen six rats in my life except for in a pet store. Yeah, me too. That really, really surprised me. And maybe they were just there because, you know, something has to eat the roaches. But uh, when I got to my car and I opened the door, it was crawling with ants. <laughs> I mean, just crawling with it. Like, not just dozens of ants, but hundreds and hundreds of ants. And uh, I f kind of freaked out about it, but I was so tired from Saturday is the big day, you know, when I, I got up at four got spend the whole entire time until about 10 p.m. there. That was probably when I tried to call you back is when you were trying to get rid of all the ants. Yeah, I think so. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I did end up spraying them the next day, but on the drive home, they would crawl on. I would feel them on my legs or on my <laughs> neck or my hands. You know, they would be on the dash or they, you know, and uh, you that a, was irritating. You brought a whole new species of horrible ant back to our state when you did that didn't you um, and I'm making it sound negative but it's always easier to talk about the negative things you know when we see a movie it's so easy to say they made a huge misstep in Man of Steel to do this you know what I mean uh -huh. Hunger Games I consider Hunger Games to be a pretty bad movie even though I know there were good things they accomplished in, in Hunger Games and I don't remember in our actual episode if we talked about it, but there's that moment at the very beginning where Katniss is showing her little sister how to, like, tie her... What was it? it was, there was a... Noose? Was there something on her shirt? There's something that Probably, she had to tie? Yeah, some kind of little And bow when or they something. choose the little girl to be in the Hunger Games, she t tries to tie no, that. It's, it's her, her... She says you can't have your duck tail sticking out, and she tucks in her shirt in the back of her pants... And then uh, that's the thing when they call her name, she stops and she realizes, and then she makes sure that she's okay. got her shirt tucked in before she heads up. That was an absolutely beautiful moment in that movie, and I've not seen the movie since it came out. I'll, I probably won't ever see it again because I reacted negatively to it. But that moment was so wonderful, and of course I didn't mention it because you know because <laughs> the things that come to mind are the you know they wouldn't hold the damn camera steady, and that sort of stuff the the stuff that that ruined my enjoyment of the movie and the same with san diego the, you we know, didn't even mention that for man of steel but that they had the same problem in that movie couldn't hold the camera s steady for anything i don't know where the hell the, the good cameramen went in hollywood but they're gone well i mean it's all encompassing it goes along to the macklemore thing, which was the point I was trying to make when we first started talking about Man of Steel. Oh, there's that motorcycle. There he is. Thanks for coming by, sir. <laughs> he could do our creative comments thing at the end. And the gang war. Yeah. The conversation I had with my friend Jeff about, I didn't know who Macklemore was, and he did, was just, a, it was a, a small representation of how I felt with Man of Steel, where it's just like, you're too old, we're not making this movie for you anymore. But the fun thing is, I've, there have been a couple of young people that I've talked to that also didn't like Man of Steel. 
and I know that that it didn't get the critical response that Warner's wanted it to have, and that a, the fans didn't go back again and again like they did for the Chris Nolan Batman movies. And I think that they expected it to be just this gargantuan hit, like on the level that Iron Man three was this summer. And it was a hit movie, and it made a lot of money. I think it, it's made over seven hundred million worldwide, but. It, it didn't do what they expected it to do. Um, and so sometimes when that kind of thing happens, it's good because maybe they'll make changes. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll learn something. When a that. Transformers movie gets, you know, like a 3% on Rotten Tomatoes, but it still makes a billion dollars, they say, you know, who cares about Rotten Tomatoes? Who cares what the critics think? Who cares, you know, about what the fans of the cartoon in 1984 thought and all that? But, I mean, and, and this should be that case, too. Not every movie has to make a, a billion dollars, but uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go with the sequel to Man of Steel. How come I'm talking about Man of Steel? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> you oh, because you had a Macklemore and a yeah, you had something. I don't it's remember. easier to talk about the negatives. Ah, okay, now and we're back on track. Back to Comic Con. <laughs> there, you know, like I said, it's in a kind of a crappy neighborhood. I mean, maybe it's a crappy part of the country. I don't know. I think um, it's just downtown San Diego. But I think pretty much any downtown you're going to get that kind of stuff unless yeah. it's surprisingly clean or something like that. That's just the way a downtown is. But I remember, and I think it was Friday or something like that, I walked out of the convention center and there was a cool breeze blowing off of the ocean. And it felt so good that suddenly I was just like, oh yeah, that's why people live here. That's why this, you know, it's like, Yeah, it's oh. weird. The last time that I went with you to Comic-Con, it was also super muggy the entire weekend. And I just thought, this is not California. That's not what it's like. It's not super humid. Even right on the ocean, it's not super humid. It's always really dry and pleasant. I don't understand what is going on here. And so, apparently, uh, it's Comic-Con week thing. <laughs> it's reserved for the fat guys to make them lose weight. Sweat it off. Although that didn't work, huh? Because you didn't lose anything. You were exactly the same, right? Yeah, I, I, I can't explain it. it may Maybe be the fast food that you had for your whole trip uh, <laughs> c- canceled that out. And I guess that's the case. I always talk about, you know, you can exercise a, a ton. But if you drink a soda every time that you exercise, you're not going to yeah. lose weight. Like, uh, I've got this app on my phone that, like, you c- it uses your GPS and you go walk around and stuff. And it'll track your walk and tell you how far you went. But it'll also tell you how many calories you burned. And you walk for an hour and you get like 400 calories burned, which is like the amount of calories in like one dollar hamburger from Wendy's. Ooh, and nobody can eat just one dollar hamburger. Yeah, usually you eat two, three, four of them. And you have a big soda, like a 16 ounce soda, which is another 350 calories and you refill it three times. So it's a thousand calories. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think I'm, we'll cut this episode fairly short and then we'll talk about something more specific. This is sort of an overarching Comic Con thing. It's too well attended. I think that they said 110,000 this year. Or maybe 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 they expected 110 and like 125 showed up or something. There's always way more people than there is room. Um, it's always difficult even to stand in one of these lines because there's no room for the lines. And because fire codes say that you can't stand in a line. and uh, But they raise the prices every year of admission. And people still come. Yeah, you. Said, I don't know what the solution is. You said that this year you got into things a lot better, though, didn't you? Like you went to stuff, at, got in line for it, and actually succeeded. So Okay, and, and yeah, that's true. And I was mostly talking about panels. Because the panel thing really bothered me when I had my heart set on seeing something. And I... I didn't just leave it to the last minute. You know, if you try to go to a panel hours ahead of time and you don't get in, something is wrong. Yeah, that's the way I felt. That's what I, the last time that I went, I was so irritated with it and the the lack of being able to see anything that, uh, yeah, I basically just said, screw this. And so far I haven't gone back. There were so many panels that were interesting to me And what I usually do every year is I'll either print out a whole schedule and circle the things that I want to go to, or to save paper, I will just compile a list of the things that I'd like to go to. 
we should do this one walking instead of sitting, I guess. Oh, yeah, I, I think we can. We, I, I haven't listened to the Lone Ranger one that we did. It probably sounds But that terrible. was on a park bench. We did a couple in your car, but it was stuffy. It was very. And last time we were here, the library was closed for renovations and, or inventory or something like that. And today it's a holiday, so we can't get into the library also. And so we're just not meant to record in that little room again. But shoot, there was something I was saying in, in, in summation. Oh, this year there were tons of panels that I would have liked to go to, but you can't go to all of them. Right. They'll be scheduled against one another, or there'll be one in one building and one in another building, or there'll be so much demand for one that you have to abandon three or four other panels just to get to the one kind of thing. And so, yeah, I didn't get to go to everything. I would have liked to have gone to that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. one, and uh, there were a couple of others. So I was like, oh, that sounds neat. But for the, the ones that I was most interested in, I did get in. I didn't get turned away from anything. And to my surprise, uh, a couple of them, I needn't have even shown up hours ahead of time. I, I don't know if maybe they had more stuff going on. Uh, we talked about it where they, they always have like the really big things all on Saturday. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and in this case, I think they had big things all four days and maybe even competing with one another. Which isn't fair, but you can't see everything, like I said. If you've got, you know, a big TV show panel and a big movie panel at the exact same time, that's going to split your audience pretty pretty well. And maybe that's what happened. Seems like they need to set them up so, like, the things that skew to one type of demographic are scheduled at the same time as things that skew to another type of demographic so that the large crowds can go separately to those. I don't know. Like your Twilight panel is at one place and your superhero panel is at a separate place because less of the same people will want to go to them and so maybe you can... I don't know. Anyways, we were summing up and I'm not helping. No, no, it's okay. Anyway, by by the end, I had spent more money than I've ever spent at a Comic-Con. You've been with me. and you, you know how I fill my car. Oh, I'm sorry. Big has just been shot. Oh... Oh! Oh, you poor bastard! Dang, drive-bys. Uh, um, this is going to be a problem, I think, for our, our marathon. So I'm going to cut it short. But I had a really good time. I, I came home happy, and uh, and I, of course I will try and go again next year. Cool. So uh, we, we'll talk a, a bit about what I saw in the next episode. Yeah, after after I get the wound cleaned. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and it's a thanks. gut shot. Those are thanks. the bad ones, too. They, they take a long time. Oh, thanks for listening, folks. I'm Big Yankovich. I'm Rashad Field. Good night. And a very pleasant tomorrow. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. As if anyone would want to copy this crap. What is that? Oh, it's somebody's stereo. I thought it was coming from here. <laughs> um, uh, you started looking around and you kind of like gulped for a second. I was like, dude, you're not going to just like puke right here, are you? I did eat a lot of Dollar Wendy's hamburgers. There you go.